This week on First Date. I'm sure it'll come to me later, but. You can DM me. Yeah. Oh, I already did. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> when I got to college and I started doing film school, that's what I really liked. But before that, maybe I had a pretty hot English teacher in uh, 11th grade, Miss Saffron. Not the question. That's a red flag. What uh, What are we talking about again? <laughs> that's a red flag in my parents. What are you doing? Why are you trying to cock block me, dad? Do you want grandkids or not? I'm so excited to see you tonight. Here we go, another episode of First Date. My guest today can be seen literally everywhere on the internet. He's got billions Only of fans. views. <laughs> he's a comedian, an author, a writer, an actor. Uh, he's been featured on Comedy Central, MTV, Barstool Sports. I mean, the list goes on and on. You guys, welcome, Trevor Wallace. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Who was that voice in the intro? Was that you? The singer? No, the other one. The one talking. Yeah. Like, is that a Furby? Yeah. That's me. Is it? Yeah. Oh, God, I'm nervous. <laughs> Hot voice. Thank you. Hot voice. I had to smoke a cigarette before that. So I like, I really get it. What is yeah, that? Yeah. I'm just kidding. I like, really a cigarette voice that. is so hot, then you kiss her and it tastes like pumpkin seeds. Gross. Ugh. But if you smoke, <laughs> it's hot. Hit me up. So I have questions for Please. you. Please. Oh, I brought a gift for you, by the way. Just, oh, my goodness. I just, I just, I don't know. My pockets were just so full that I just didn't know what to do with these. So I just thought I'd leave those there. Oh, I see. Never mind. Yeah. Okay, the joke bombed. That's okay. The joke bombed, all right? Well, I mean, there was too many ones there. Yeah, but it's for valet. It's going to cost I, you way more than that. Yeah, but like, here's the thing. Like, if I could put the blockchain on the table, I would. I also Crypto. don't like condoms. You don't like condoms? No. Welcome to Texas, baby. Raw dog at all raw the way. Raw doggin'. That's the UT Austin mascot. Yeah. The raw dogs. Mm -hmm. It's a bull. Yeah. I don't know. Horns down. Horns down. Horns up. I'm horny. All right. There you go. Let's start the show. <laughs> uh, so I have questions. I have appetizer questions. Please. Main course questions. Yes. And then a dessert question. Ooh. Do you need a safe word? Uh. Like now or no? Yeah, you should pick a safe word now. What in does case that mean? I like cross oh, I a tap line out? Uh, and you're like Ooh. artichoke. Okay. Um, I say that. Or you say that. You say that. Cool. But I'll say it too. We can artichoke these questions together. You can artichoke me tonight. We'll All artichoke right. it down. Somebody, somebody. <laughs> We're gonna artichoke. <laughs> it's too early for this. <laughs> I tried to offer you a martini. You know, maybe we'll see. That's my safety word, martini. So we're changing from artichoke. Who Can't knows? just pick. Words I'm ambidextrous. I'll do whatever here. the hell I need to. Okay, artichoke martini, either one. That's I'll go for that's it. it's a collab. Artichoke martini. Okay, I'm ready. We're gonna start off with some appetizer questions. Phone do you have any irrational fears? Probably dying. That's not irrational. <laughs> it could be. Why is that irrational? I mean, look at a guy like Elon Musk. He's like, I will live forever. So that's not like a fear for him. But um, I don't know. I think an irrational fear is that um. I think not being a good father to my cat, that's kind of a big fear. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's just at home all day, bored. Yeah. What's your irrational fear? What are what does the word irrational mean? That's what I should have started with. <laughs> like fears that don't ha like that don't happen but could happen? Yeah, I guess so. Um like I'm oh. deathly afraid of dying in an airplane. Yeah. I just too many people it takes away the spotlight because then it's not like oh Lauren Compton died it's like oh you're 300 one of yeah. a bunch exactly yeah that, I think I would be uh, an irrational fear would be getting hit by a car and dying but I can't pick the car that you if, get a hit yeah because if you get hit by a Ford F-350 everyone's like that's an American hero but like <laughs> if you die from a Fiat that's on you. Yeah. Everybody's at your like funeral being like, where's the Bruce? Look at this little bitch over here. Right? You know, that's an irrational fear. Would you want to like get hit by like a Mack truck and just end it, make sure you're done? The Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. There you go. <laughs> yeah, just speared through the head. Yeah. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. That would make headlines. Yeah. I probably, yeah, no, I, I think getting hit by a car I like, couldn't pick. And also like, what does is, what is my like last face look like? You know? Yeah. Because like, imagine if there was like a street camera and I'm like, oh, like. If I'm about to get hit, I need to know. So I can be like, like, I just need stone cold fish. It's like, hit me. Yeah. I don't know. I think my rational fear would also be like, what are my last words? Can I pick them or not? What would your last words be? Probably, oh, fuck. But <laughs> I, like, I would want to be like, the password is, and then just. Yeah. To what? to what? What a cliffhanger. Yeah, I think cliffhanger. 
There you go. But like nobody would care. Leave nobody them guessing. Hear me. Yeah. Love I think that. so. Um, what group were you in in high school? Uh, I was, I hung out with the cool kids, but I wasn't a cool kid. You know, like I was on the bench for the Lakers. Like we were all, like I, like I went to a lot of parties, but when I walked in, it was with the group. Nobody was like, oh, Trev's here. People would be like, <laughs> it'd be like, oh, CJ and the boys are here. So I was a part of the boys. You know, I was like a, uh, I was like a Backstreet Boy who wasn't front and center. You were a supporting actor. Yeah. In the movie. I was on a big show, but I wasn't a lead. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, probably that. I hung out with those guys. Um, but like I, I partied, you know, I had a girlfriend at one point. Yeah. How many girlfriends have you had? Four, I think. Like serious ones? Yeah, like four. What's the longest term you've had in a relationship? Mentally my whole life. Honestly. I've just <laughs> always been in love. Uh, two and a half years. That was, uh, that was probably the most, that was like the second recent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you speak any foreign languages? Um, damn. No. But I could like, I could put on a front that I could, you know. You give me an Adderall and a Duolingo subscription, I'm there. <laughs> Marseille Pouvi, I don't know. <laughs> Something. Yeah. I just speak fucking dog. I need, whatever you need me to speak, I got you, girl. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. Your first language is just spit and game? Yeah, but I don't have game. You don't think you do? No. Like, the, what happens is somebody might find me attractive, and the more I keep talking, I, like, talk myself out of their attractiveness. <laughs> Like, you know, they're like, you were so hot at first. And then you compared my like mom to like a penguin. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm just like always in bits mode. And like, girls don't want bits. Yeah. You know? <laughs> girls don't want bits. Yeah. I'm like, trying. that's my problem with dating is I try to riff with girls. And like, if there's no riff, then I'm like, ah. So wh how do you, if you're on a date with a girl and like, you can tell you're not riffing, it's not <sighs> vibing. It's tough. How do you get out of it? Um, I, I kind of just accept it for what it is. And I go... You know, at least I look cool. People from other tables be like, Trev's on a hot date. Yeah. But mentally, I'm like, this is the worst place ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's my irrational fear that you're having a, you're just crash and burning. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think, uh, I think it's kind of, I don't know. I just like good conversation, which sounds so fucking pussy of me to say, but you know, you just see so many dates in Los Angeles where it's like a one-sided podcast. It's just like just a guy just venting and then the girl's just like tapping away and you're like, wow, damn, that's love. Do you feel like you're going to find love in L.A.? Maybe in like Toluca Lake, maybe the outskirts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I am confident that I will, but maybe I won't. I don't know. How do you date? How do you find girls? I usually I don't I'm not on dating apps. I just like either DMs, ladies, or Kind of just like in life, I guess, I mean, after a show or like at a bar through a friend. Yeah. I think. I think that. I just, I don't know. Dating apps just too, it's too like cannibal. It's just too like you're just a, just caveman. You're just left, right. Like there's no like yeah. sense in it. It, it just, it's just like, it's like, I don't know. The attention span to your brain gives it. It's just not healthy, I think. Would you ever date a fan? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because then they know what your life is kind of entails. They're like, oh, he tours a lot. He's always, you know, uh, filming or working or editing. Like, he's a busy man. Like, they kind of know. But, like, I think that's almost better because I've been on dates where a girl's like, so what do you do? And I'm like, oh, no. You've Now I got to be like, now, now I have to explain the reason why I, like, work, like, 16-hour days. And she's like, this is not making me wet at all. And I'm like, no, it is. For yeah. the algorithm, babe, the algorithm. <laughs> so I think if somebody knows my life is better, but um, I think the amount of work that I put into the day to day, fucking Gary Vee, I, I like, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. So like, if somebody can get on board and like, oh yeah, I I know Trevor, I know his podcast, Stiff Socks, I know his podcast, I know his videos, <laughs> I know he tours a lot. Then you know they're, they're understanding like what's going on. Not yeah. that somebody can't get used to that, but it is a little easier maybe. Yeah. Uh, would you ever date a girl on OnlyFans? Yeah, I'm wearing OnlyFans socks right now. By the way. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I came in them last night. So I You're a I'd supporter. Of OnlyFans? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I, I think they're doing great things over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you were in school, what was your best subject? <sighs> Probably whippets. Man, whippets are going around <laughs> these days. 
I've heard about a lot of people doing whippets <laughs> lately. That's Texas, baby. It's so hot. They're like, give me some of that fucking <laughs> that whipped cream. I would pass cool out. Off. No, it's the opposite. You get oxygen from it. Too much oxygen. Uh, if you do it right, you got to microdose the whippets. Oh, no, I think man. My, my favorite subject. God, I don't know. When I got to college and I started doing film school, that's what I really liked. But before that, maybe I'm trying to think. I had a pretty hot English teacher in eleventh uh, grade, Miss Saffron. Not the question. That's a red flag. What? Uh, what are we talking about again? <laughs> <laughs> she was a swim coach. <laughs> yeah. What was your worst subject? Math. I was a senior in a class with a bunch of sophomores, which is not good. If you think all the sophomores, like, dude, Trev's so cool. He's a senior. Dude, I gotta relate to you. I failed pre-algebra three years in a row. Yeah, I I don't even know if I ever made it. To I algebra. don't even know how to use a calculator. Really? I, well, I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah. But holy shit, I'm so bad. I was terrible at math. At math. Terrible at math. And then they'd always be like, oh, show your work. I'd be like, I copied this. What do you, <laughs> why just be drawing like wingdings on the side of the paper to make it look like work? Yeah. I'd put in more work faking work than doing the actual work. Ba okay. Same. Yeah. yeah. But whatever. Main course questions coming up. Oh, boy. Are you ready? Yes. Is anyone under the impression that they are in a relationship with you? Probably mentally, yeah. Yeah? There's people that DM me every single day. Just, DM? Yeah, but they, but they just are like, you know, they're just saying, they're just, it's like a, di like, people's DMs are like a diary for some people. Like somebody was just last night was like, hey, I have tickets to a Nickelback concert. Do you want to go to Nickelback? Do you like Nickelback? And then they kept asking questions. Then one of the questions, she goes, thinking about how you are in bed. Do you sweat in bed? Like how sweaty are we talking? Full conversation. Gosh, she's going to take over my job. It's AI. I don't know what's going on, but she's it is. She's got so um, many questions. Yeah. Do you well, sweat that's in women. bed? What? Do I sweat in bed? Yeah, I'd say so. Do you like to sleep with it cold? Yeah, got to be cold. I go room super cold, but like covered in a blanket. You Same. Know? Yeah. I hope this girl's watching this podcast. I'm helping her out. She's watching me sleep at night. Yeah. Oh. She is locked in. But does anybody think they're in a relationship with me? No, I don't think so. Do you feel like you're clear when you date? What what your status? What yeah, well, also women will ask you. They'll be like, what are we? And you're like, oh boy. <laughs> so they let it be known. Because yeah. they want the, you know, you both want the title just so you, you know, and it's like, is are we here yet? We've been dating for X amount of time. What are, what are we? So, Fair question to ask. Which, and to that, mm -hmm. how long do you feel like you date someone before you can define that? I think three months is good. It's yeah. like a Spotify premium trial, you know? You really know, like, do you want <laughs> to pay you that? Do you subscribe? Yeah. Do you want that nine ninety nine a month or not? Yeah. What locks you in when you date? What's your... Man. I would say... Uh, God, I think there's there's just like a feeling when it feels right. Like it just feels like because sometimes I'm and I'm sure everybody in here has had that where you get a text from somebody you're like, what do you want? Yeah, and it's not that. Oh, beautiful. That I think what locks it in is just I don't even. Good personality is really where I'm at. Not to sound like a fuckboy, but a good personality, you know, sends back funny stuff. I should just date Joe Rogan. I don't know what I need. <laughs> I need a guy. You know, good personality, sexually active in these streets, maybe has an ass, definitely has an ass. Are you an ass guy or a boob guy? Ass guy. Blonde hair or brunette? Brunette. Do you care about eye color? No, but I think blue is an added value. Blue's yeah. like added. You know when you're like getting a rental car and they're like, do you want CarPlay? And you're like, fuck yeah. CarPlay yeah. is like the blue eyes for me. Yeah. I like blue eyes too. They're so pretty to look at. They are, and they look, they look great on camera. And they're also just like cap. They're just bright, captivating. Yeah. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life, so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice, the easier it gets. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. I personally feel like therapy is a great answer to any life situation. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your own schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash date today to get 10% off your first month. 
That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash date. What, what is cheating to you? Can you define cheating? <laughs> yeah. I think even having the thought of another woman is cheating. Yeah? Oh, you hold the door for a woman? For what? So you can hold her legs open later? Cheating. Yeah. Uh, I think cheating is... You know, everybody knows. When but, you start looking around, when you start like, when you start uh, even respond, you respond to it. If you're in a relationship and you respond to a girl's Instagram, oh, oh, that broccoli's so funny. Yeah, okay. You want to have sex with her, don't you? <laughs> if you respond to another woman's Instagram, like that was like, that was a bit I was doing in the beginning of my breakup it was like, like the funniest thing about being single is you'll never respond to more girls' Instagrams in your life. Just anything and everything. She's like taking her dog to the park and you're like, oh, border collies, man. I got to give me one of those. You're just like trying to start a conversation with nobody. Just like the girl in my DMs. Yeah. So yeah. you'll just never respond to more stories than when you're single. But I think it's like, um, I think there's signs that you may not cheat, but they are on a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they open a girl's DM and they like it, but they don't comment. They go, oh, babe, I was just liking it. I think it's that. I think, uh, but main, I think ultimate cheating, cheating is just obviously hooking up with somebody else. Yeah. You know, if, if your partner had an emotional relationship with another guy, like a friend and she was like, she's, he's just a friend, but they had like, like they talked like in their car rides together. What the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just like, Girl, you ain't an Uber driver. Get that man out of here. <laughs> uh, I would be skeptical because here, here's where my head is, and, and this is not the right answer. Then in my head, I'd be like, oh, well, now I got to talk to one of her best friends, and it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And like that's not a good relationship at all. So I think if it's like a work friend, maybe, but he has to be a higher-up position. You can't be flirting with an intern. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's, um, I don't know, but it's also a trust thing. If you trust your girlfriend and she's got a friend like that, then she's not doing anything wrong. What is a turn-off for you? Uh, a turn off, probably like laziness. Like, like I think, uh, there was like a morning where I, I had something at like 11. I'm like starting to get ready. And she's like, no, stay in bed, stay in bed. I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> My brain is going a hundred miles an hour. I'm worried about TikTok. I don't want to cuddle. I'm just laying there thinking about Zuckerberg. You know, this is not a good look for me. But I was like, what do you got going on today? She's like, oh, I have something at four, but I think I'm going to cancel. I'm feeling too tired. I'm like, that's in five hours. Yeah. I, I need like a, I need some girl boss in her, you know? Yeah. Little girl boss, something like that. Some hustle. Some hustle. I also think, and that's fine if you vape, but you know, because that's a quarter of the population, but it is interesting like, to be laying in bed with a girl and she's like vaping. And you're like, oh, is that because I put it down? She's like, no, I'm just addicted. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> I thought I put in that work, you know, Just started ripping on the puff bar. But Yeah. I like cheering for someone else in a relationship too. Like I want to know yeah. oh, that I'm yeah. not the only person that has shit going on. Yes, of course. Yeah. I want, I want to, it's like, I want the best of both worlds. I want the joint unity where you're like, fuck yeah, we're both busy. We're doing things, but also like you do, you think you do your, your thing. And then you like go back and like. Yeah. You both go off to work, come back, and you celebrate the wins together, I guess. 100%. Yeah. Every woman is so dry right now. It's like, shut up, Trevor. Take me to Tulum. <laughs> Let's say that you're on a date. Yes. And a hot girl walks by. <laughs> How do you sneak a look? Uh, you go, where's the bathroom? You go, Wait, where's the bath bathroom? Is she going to the bathroom? And then you can just stare at her ass. <laughs> you know what? It's so crazy that you're so good at that. That's a red flag. No, it's not a red flag. It's a green flag. It's a good flag. I'm learning. Because what you guys do it too. You're like, oh, I'm going to go get a drink at the bar. The bartender's hot. We know what you're doing. Yeah. There's a waitress that comes to the table, takes the drink orders. I'm going to go talk to the bartender. Yeah. Okay. They go with a neck tattoo of a flaming eyeball. Yeah. We see what's going on here. Yeah. I think, I think uh, it's a lot of, or you, or you be like, oh, what did they get over there? Right. I've never done that, but you could. It's, it's an idea that has crossed your mind. Yeah, I think it's 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 fun to be like, oh, what are, they got lasagna? What do they get? They just have waters? Yeah. What, what is that? Over, oh, shit. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What's the longest that you think you should date someone before you introduce them to your parents? Oh, interesting. Mm, I think three months is about the time before you get into a relationship. So maybe around that. Maybe get in a relationship first and then introduce. Or you see how they react with your parents before you pop the question goes for both sides yeah are your parents cool yeah they're very cool they're cool and my parents are very um they, they don't they don't hold back 
they kind of just say what they're thinking, which is good and bad. They'd be like, oh, she was interesting. I was like, what does that mean? Yeah. She's not a book. What do you mean interesting? So I will, or they'll tell me after I dated somebody, they'll be like, she was nice. You know, p- parts of her didn't seem like you, but she was <laughs> nice. <laughs> They're, it's like the same way my mom talks about food at a restaurant. She likes it. Or if she doesn't like it, she'll be like, it was good. Wasn't for me. Wouldn't get it again, <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> So they're good, honestly, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know yourself the best. Yeah. Well, if you were in love with a girl and your parents- I am. Are you? Mentally, maybe. Okay. Let's say your parents <laughs> fucking hate that girl. <clears throat> yeah. But you love her. Uh-huh. Does it matter? It's a red flag in my parents. What are you doing? Why are you trying to cock block me, dad? <laughs> Do you want grandkids or not? <laughs> oh, where's your grandkids? I would always be fun to have a Christmas with the grandkids. Well, I'm not going to have grandkids if you don't let me get some kids. Yeah. No, I, I mean, honestly, I think uh, that is int- I would hear him out. I'd be like, what's your logic on this? Uh huh. Um, but that happens all the time, you know? But you always want what you can't have. Maybe my dad's jealous. <laughs> Insert air horns. <laughs> How long until you feel. Like it's safe to take a shit at your partner's house. Wow. Well, whenever they leave, so it could be first date, but she's like, oh, I'm going to go get the mail. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm in and out. I'm Jason Bourne in that bitch. I'm in and out. What if she doesn't leave? I I don't know. Honestly, that's, and it's not even, like I could tell myself mentally, like, yeah, I should just go to the bathroom. But like my brain and my bowels are connected. So my brain will be like, like, no, 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 can't do that. So I could like say I want to go to the bathroom, but like my body won't let me. Really? But that's how I honestly, and this is very weird. That's how I know if I'm comfortable with somebody is my body's around somebody. Like the girl I dated for two and a half years, like that was probably pretty quick where you're like, my body trusts this person. This feels like there's a long term here. This feels like we can be silly, goofy with each other and be like, don't go in there. Ha 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 ha. No, seriously, don't fucking go in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I, th- I think it's all around that, like, when you, I don't even know. I think it's all around that same period. Because when you start, when you want to ask them to be your girlfriend, that should be around the time where you're like, I feel very comfortable with this person. Yeah. It's three months, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of long. That's long. I feel like three months is, like, a good. Yeah, well, there's levels to it. I also think there's, like, you go to the bathroom in front of them, and then you hit a point where you stop caring, and the door is just wide open. Yeah. And you're having a full-blown conversation, you know? Yeah. I think I'm a... I think if I'm taking a poop. Women don't do that. Princesses don't do that. There we go. There we go. How long do you wait? Well, my brain doesn't communicate with my butt. Really? If I have to go. You're going. I'm going. And I will go in there, turn on some water, some death death music. Like just. What are you doing to that toilet? I just want to make sure. (laughs) What? What in the Bucky's brisket sandwich are you eating in there? I have to make sure that the music yeah, is so loud say, and obnoxious. Gr- girls poop so fast because you turn I on do. the sink and then be like, did you just wash your hands? Like it's mm-hmm. just on one, two, three, done. But but it is the sink. The I need sink that. is helpful. I need that in the men's urinal because like when a guy is next to me and he's got a louder pee stream than me, I wish I had the sink so I could turn. I get in my head real yeah. easy. If he's got a louder pee stream than me, I'm flushing. I'm f- <laughs> That's the most beta, like, cuck move in the world <laughs> is when you flush the urinal next to a guy. I wait for them to do it. Then I'm like, fuck, bitch. Yeah. Yeah, you, I got that pool noodle flow. You didn't even know it. <laughs> um, let's say you're in a relationship and your significant other is gaining weight. Yeah. Do you tell them that they're gaining weight? How do you tell them? Mm. No, I don't think you tell them. I think you just break up with them. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Because at the end of the day, like, if you're looking at your significant other and the weight's pissing you off, it's like it probably wasn't a great relationship to begin with. So many of the happiest relationships, uh, they... I saw an article online actually that said happier couples tend to gain weight over the time. And I look back at my last relationship. She had a six pack the entire time. Not a good relationship. Miserable. (laughs) It was a great relationship, but I do think that is funny. I don't, I don't know. I don't, but also like my guess is if she's gaining weight, he's probably gaining weight. It's probably a one for one combo or you like, I don't know. 
it, it, there's no right answer without fucking Reddit yelling at me. So I think you just go like, <laughs> I'm gonna. I think you'd be like, I'm gonna start going to the gym. You wanna come with me? And then if she's like, Why do you think I'm fat? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta be good bonding between us. Do you we, think you're pretty healthy? Yes and no. I think so. Like I'll drink like an athletic greens and then I'll just have like like fried chicken right after. I'm like they they counterbalance. I think they do, especially yeah. celery juice. It actually burns calories. Really? Mm-hmm. Counteracts itself. Damn. All right. Yeah. I also try to work out. You know. You look fit. You look healthy. Thank you. What if? Do you have a fast food preference? In and Out or Taco Bell? I think. What about you? Yeah, I had in and out for lunch. Really? I had it wrapped in lettuce. Yeah, lettuce wrap. There's great. It's I phenomenal. Like them. So good. It feels refreshing. That first bite, the crunch sounds like a commercial. It's good. Yeah. Mine was a little soggy though. I waited too That's long. That's Texas. I know. Yeah, if you wait too long, it is weird. It's like a wet wallet. It's then not I just good. ate it with a fork and a knife. Really? Kind of took the lettuce off of it. Oh, you you undressed her. I mean Hold up. Dropped its panties. Damn. Put it in my mouth. Damn. Swallowed. Let us talk about that. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, the lettuce rabbit is good, but you wait too long. It, you just, it's all over your fingers. You feel like a five year old with an iPad. Especially with these frog stickers. Gets underneath frog my stickers? Nails. Yeah. Have you never heard them called frog stickers? Fingers? Frogs, fingernails. Frog stickers? No. I don't really know what it means. I'll be honest. My mom just used to say that. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. I've never heard that, but I'm going to use that. Frog stickers. Frog stickers. Yeah. No, I never heard that. <laughs> not not in like a bad way. I'm not saying your mom's like delusional or anything. But well, I'm here to teach you things. Do you feel <laughs> well my mom is delusional though? There we too. go. She's in her seventies. Yeah. You hit like six and you're like, I'll tell you what the truth is. <laughs> like, yeah. Mom, what? Put the oatmeal down. <laughs> um Do you have any bad tattoos? I don't. My equivalent of bad tattoos in high school, I had my ears gauged. I had like the hole in my ears. Your ears came back. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, uh, surprised me. We still see through like this one, I think, but like my parents were like, you're going to regret it. I was like, no, I won't. And then I did. So that's like a punk thing, right? I, I don't know what I was doing. Literally, the reason I got it, there was a, a guy in my science class who had them and he got chicks. And I was like, it's what they want. And <laughs> if he gets chicks, you get chicks. Literally, but that's how a high school brain works. It's like a chameleon. You're like, that guy gets vagina. Also, he was like six foot three, played on the football team, was like 250 stacked. And I was like, oh, we'll be the same body type. <laughs> um, but yeah, the only thing that ever happened when I got gauges was just other guys being like, dude, do yours smell too? Like, mine smell really bad. Ew. Yeah, I was like, this is the opposite of women. This is terrible. <laughs> just other guys being like, what are you putting there? Pencils? Erasers? A gun. Jesus. It's not. It's like a storage unit in your head. It was not good. But like in my head, it, it, I was like 16. I was like, this will get chicks. Because they're like, women, pain, they like that. Did you get chicks? No. One. I had a girlfriend. Yeah. Eventually. She dated me with those in. God damn. It worked. Yeah. She's in Missouri now, two kids. Oh. Good Did for her. Did she have gauged ears? I don't know. She's probably got a 12 gauge. It's Missouri. <laughs> We in the South. I don't know where Missouri is. Somewhere out there. What? Where is Texas? Is Texas the South? Texas is most of the United States. I know that, but like, what is, what is, is this the South? Or is this I Midwest? I personally consider it the South because it's, if you look at North, East, West, South, it's South. True. But some people wouldn't consider it the South. So I live in Los Angeles, Southern California. Am I from the South? Southern California. So I'm making out with my cousin. Southwest. Yee -yee. Southwest. Southwest. That's an airline. Peanuts. Thank you, Trevor. I'm not as dumb as I look. You're not. I never said that. Thank you. What's the worst date you've ever been on? The worst date I've ever been on was probably, there's one that comes to mind, but it's like not like, let me see. The word there. Uh, one time I just went on a date and then we just went to two the same restaurant but it was different names and she was at one in downtown i was at one in like hollywood and she's like i'm here i'm here da -da -da, back and forth back and forth that's not really that bad i don't know nothing like horribles ever happened another guy ever showed up or ever got caught i don't know yeah i don't know i maybe maybe artichoke on that just because i don't have any good answer i just don't think i have a bad answer like i think like there's like in my head, there's like dates where you're like, oh, we're not compatible, but there's not like a bad date where like this, like the waiter was like a seven foot dude who's like, oh, what's up, shoddy? Like there's no like, yeah, Brian Scalabrini's not dicking down any of my dates. So I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't think so. I'm sure it'll come to me later, but. You can DM me. Yeah. Oh, I already did. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'll ask you my dessert question. Please. What is the sweetest thing you've ever done for someone? Anyone? That you've been with. That I've dated. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you consider yourself romantic? Uh, yeah, I think, I think I'm romantic. I think I'm just a good listener. And I would just like, there was, I was over the year I, when I was dating this girl, I was like, kind of just like collecting down. Like, like, she would like say something, but can I really want this? I really want that. Blah, 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 blah. And I was just like her Amazon, like Alexa, just being like, yes, yes, yes. I was just writing it down in the back of my head. And then when Christmas came around, she's like, oh my God, these are all the things I've been talking about. And I was like, <laughs> that's me. I mean, I think there's got to be sweeter. Let me think. There's really got to be sweeter. Did a couple beach picnics. Um, I honestly think the sweetest thing I've ever done is like for my parents. I think I care more about the you know, like ro ro romance is such a subjective word because it's like buying a purse for somebody is very romantic, but also you know like a like a, a, a scavenger hunt with a bunch of cute things is really romantic. So there's like no. Oh, I've never done that. A scavenger hunt. Not in a relationship. My mom used to do those for me yeah. when I was little. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think it's just been. Um, I don't even. It's just. Like, Have you ever traveled anywhere with a girl? Yeah. Oh, once. Oh, you know what? I got it. This is the answer. Put this in. One Valentine's Day, uh, the morning of, I was like, "Hey, we're going to LAX," and she's like, "Where are we going?" I was like, "I don't know. We're just gonna get on a flight." And we did one of those like next flight out type deals. Mm -hmm. So we went there and it ended up being Denver. This is the sweetest thing I ever did. It's all coming back to me. God, I miss her. It's all coming back to me. But we went to the airport. We're like, next flight out. Where's it going? And it happened to be Denver. So we went to Denver for Valentine's Day and spent a weekend there. Kind of just went around with some restaurants, had a fun time. Stayed at some hotel that had a uh, uh, two twin size beds because it was Valentine's Day weekend and everything was sold out and we didn't plan anything. So... It was a lot of fun. There was no expectations. And it just like, uh, it felt very rom com -y. And I think we like vlogged the whole thing. Like it was like a fun, like it felt romantic. And, and, and it was, what I like about it is both sides had fun. I think a lot of gifts, it feels like the guy's like, I'm just buying this to buy this, you know. But this one was like, we're both experiencing this at the same time. If that makes sense. Yeah. And this was a Valentine's Day gift. This was, yeah. Probably what that. did she do anything for you? Sexually? Uh I'm trying to think. I don't know what she got me. Or I think it I think it was like one of those where like that was the gift was that and she's like, I'll buy the flight, you buy the hotel. What whatever it is. I I forget what it was, but it was like an equal participation type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this podcast is always pretty short. It's only 30 minutes. Whoa. 32 on the dot. Time flies by when you're having fun. That's what I always say. Well, obviously you're everywhere on the internet, but where can people find you? TrevorWallsComedy.com. If I have tour dates coming up, uh, I'm filming a special this weekend. So it'll be out somewhere in the fall. I'm excited for that. What's it called? Uh, I'm, I have a few names in my head right now. It's not, I don't have the name for okay. it just yet, but it'll be out there. It'll be uh, it'll be really fun. We're filming it at the Paramount in town. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to get this thing off the ground. And yeah. uh, that's really all I have working on right now. And then I just, I put out sketches every week on my YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Just Trevor Walls on everything. Cool. Cool to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming on. Awesome. We'll see you guys next week. First date, baby. Are you really drinking a glass of milk with dinner? First date, I can't wait. You told your mom about me? Just say you're ready. Delete my number.